Remember that moment when something fundamental you relied on just changed? Like the rules suddenly shifted, leaving you kind of scrambling to figure things out on the fly. Oh, yeah. That feeling. Well, what if that very thing then unexpectedly changed back? That's the kind of uh, head-scratching scenario unfolding right now in the world of virtualization. It certainly feels like a bit of a roller coaster for many users, doesn't it? Absolutely. Because today, we're diving deep into a truly surprising development. Broadcom has, well, rather quietly, made its ESXi hypervisor free again. <laughs> yeah, quietly is the word. This comes after its previous removal from the free tier, a move that definitely um, didn't go unnoticed. No fanfare at all this time, which is quite a contrast, really. Exactly. We've got a recent report that details this unexpected shift and the immediate buzz, or perhaps more accurately, the immediate reaction from the tech community. Hmm. So for you, the learner, our mission with this deep dive is to try and cut through the, you know, the noise and confusion. Yeah, make sense of it. We want to understand what this change really signifies. Maybe you're running a home lab or managing IT for a small business, or maybe you're just keeping a pulse on the latest tech news. Right. We'll explore what's new, what limitations are still sticking around, and really get to the heart of why the community's response has been, well, let's just say marked by cautious reservation. A healthy dose of skepticism seems uh, appropriate given the recent history. Definitely. Okay. Let's dive right into the most unexpected part, mm -hmm. this return of the free ESXi. It wasn't, like, announced with any big press release or splashed across tech headlines. No, not at all. What's striking is how quietly it was rolled out, almost like a footnote in the release notes for ESXi 8.0 Update 3E. That's right. The discovery wasn't from some big Broadcom announcement. It was actually the community itself, you know, those folks with the keen eye on the updates, who spotted it and started talking about it. Mm. News just spread through forum, social media, organically. Which is really telling, isn't it? Considering Broadcom's uh, recent big changes to their licensing model, any kind of shift like this was bound to get people talking. Absolutely. The fact that it was handled so discreetly only adds to the intrigue and perhaps even a bit of, well, unease. It does raise questions, definitely. The reemergence of the free again aspect is particularly significant because of those recent changes. Mm. A lot of users felt... Um, caught off guard when the free tier was just eliminated. Right. Uh, so its return, even in this sort of understated way, is definitely going to get some strong reactions. So beyond the headline of free again, what specific technical updates did this ESOA 8.0 Update 3E actually bring? The report mentioned a few things. Yes. Alongside the, uh, the licensing change, there are some targeted technical improvements. The update includes support for CDC and CM in the USB driver. Okay. And the report points out this is particularly relevant for users with HPE Gen 12 ILO virtual NICs, basically allowing for, you know, better network comms management for the integrated management interface on those specific HPE servers. Interesting. Okay. Specific hardware focus there. And there were also enhancements to quick boot support. Correct. There's now broader quick boot support for a range of drivers, things like Intel VRAN, that's for virtualized radio access networks, uh -huh. platform monitoring data center graphics, and even AMD Instinct MI cards, those high-performance computing GPUs. Right, the AI stuff. Exactly. So these updates seem more focused on specific hardware setups and uh, certain kinds of workloads, probably more interesting for enterprise or specialized users maybe. But the real story, like we said, is the licensing. Can you break down exactly how we can now access this free version? Is it simpler? Well, the core change is that the ESXi hypervisor, specifically vSphere 8, can now be downloaded directly from Broadcom's support portal. Okay. You have to fill out a compliance form first, but then you can download it without needing to separately request and manage a license key like before. Ah, so no more hunting for that free key email. Exactly. That streamlined download process is, well, it's a significant improvement over the old method, I'd say. And what about the license itself? How does it compare to the old free version? Or, you know, are there any strings attached we should know about? So upon installation, it now just comes with a default basic license. Mm -hmm. And importantly, this license doesn't have an expiration date. Oh, that's big. No more 60-day evil thing. Right. That's a key difference from the previous 60-day evaluation licenses. The report also suggests it seems to be a generic license across different installations, so you don't need individual registration for each instance. Okay, that sounds pretty positive on the surface. Yeah. Less friction. But the big question, the one clearly buzzing around the community, is... What does free actually mean in practical terms now? Exactly. And given the uh, the recent history, 
the community's caution is totally understandable. Yeah. From initial observations, it looks like you can deploy and run virtual machines with this free license, which is, you know, the fundamental point of a hypervisor. Right, the basic function. But if you were to remove the license, the virtual machines would no longer be able to boot or reboot. Ah. So the license, even though it's basic and free, is still essential for the system to actually work. And what about those limitations we remember from the previous free ESSI? Have any of those been lifted? Or are they still there? Well, the key restrictions appear to be sticking around. Like vCenter. Yep. Still no support for vCenter management, which is you know vital for managing multiple ESXi hosts and larger setups. And backups. The backup APIs also remain unavailable in the free version. So in terms of those significant limitations, it does seem very much like the old free ESXi. Mm -hmm. However, the report does mention mild changes under the hood. Ooh, intriguing. What could that mean? Well, it suggests there might be subtle differences, maybe not immediately obvious, that users will kind of discover over time. It's a bit vague. That phrase, mild changes under the hood, yeah, that's intriguing and probably adds to the community's hesitant reaction, right? I think so. Speaking of which, the report really captures the overall sentiment. It doesn't sound like people are uh, popping the virtual champagne just yet. No, far from it. That Reddit thread mentioned in the report, it really gives you a snapshot of the broader community response. What's the vibe? It's a mix. You see some cautious optimism, maybe a tiny sliver of hope for some users, but overwhelmingly there's this strong undercurrent of skepticism and wariness. The fool me once thing. Exactly. That feeling is definitely prevalent. This cautious reaction, it really underscores a significant erosion of trust. Yeah. Broadcom will need more than just bringing back a free tier to rebuild that trust, you know? If they hope to keep or win back users in the long run, this isn't just about features anymore. It's about perceived reliability and uh, predictability. It really is. The report shares some specific examples of what people are saying online. Things like, this might just be a mistake, or maybe it's just temporary appeasement. Exactly. That really highlights the lack of confidence that seems to have built up. Precisely. There's a genuine concern that this could just be reversed again without much warning potentially leaving users who rely on it in a really difficult spot. And what about the people who already jump ship? Right. Then there are those who have already invested time and resources migrating to alternatives, Proxmox, XEBNG, whatever. Yeah. They're stating quite clearly online, nope, not switching back. For them, the trust has been pretty significantly damaged. And for those still using VMware products, what's their take? The report points to more of a wait-and-see approach for them. It acknowledges that, sure, the return of the free version is definitely a welcome option for home labs, test environments, maybe individual dev workstations. Uh -huh. But there's that underlying hesitation, that reluctance to fully embrace it without more certainty, more clarity from Broadcom. That seems like a prudent stance to take, I think. I agree. While having a no-cost hypervisor is generally a good thing, the recent history has taught users to be cautious. Yeah, right? yeah. And to avoid making big long-term decisions based just on this development without seeing more consistency from Broadcom. The report also digs into some of the limitations that persist beyond just vCenter and backup APIs. What are some other key things users need to keep in mind with this free version? Right. Even with the free tier back, several functional limits remain. We mentioned the lack of vCenter support. That's a big one for managing multiple hosts. Okay. Crucially, access to patches and updates via the Lifecycle Manager or the online repository is also uh, absent. So how do you update? You have to rely on full ISO upgrades for updates, which is just more involved, usually means more downtime, maybe carries a higher risk compared to smaller incremental patches. Right, less convenient. And that long-standing limitation of, what was it, eight virtual CPUs per virtual machine that's also very likely still in effect. This is still capped. Seems so. So while you can run VMs, the resources you can allocate to each might still be restricted. And then there's the manual update management, potential compatibility issues with VIBs, those community-developed add-ons for ESXi. Ah, yeah, the community drivers and things. Exactly. Those are all factors users will need to consider. And it seems the way trial licenses were handled before has also changed, according to the report. Yes, it appears that the previous 60-day trial license path is... Well, it's gone. So no more trying out fuller features for a bit. Doesn't look like it. Now, the basic free license is just the direct offering. The report notes that the evaluation handoff now actually requires a connection to a licensed vCenter. Which you can't use with a free version anyway. Exactly. So hmm. it kind of simplifies things in one way. You get the free license up front, 
but it removes that short-term evaluation period with potentially more features that some users might have found useful. So considering all these changes, the limitations, the community's sort of wary response, the big question becomes, what do you think Broadcom's underlying motivation is here? The report touches on the uncertainty. That is the million dollar question, isn't it? And as the report rightly points out, speculating on Broadcom's exact intentions is pretty difficult. Yeah. It's possible this is a direct response to the, uh, the significant negative feedback they got after the initial licensing changes. Trying to put out the fire a bit. Maybe. Perhaps they are trying to gauge the community's reaction, see if this move helps to you know, alleviate some of that negative sentiment. Or as the report also suggests, it could just be a PR move, couldn't it? Yeah, a way to generate some positive press, maybe ease tensions a little, without necessarily signaling a fundamental shift in their overall business strategy. Hmm. Both scenarios are plausible, I think. The report's description of this as not a full 180, more like a half step back, seems very accurate to me. Yeah, I like that phrasing. It's definitely a change, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really address all the underlying concerns that have been raised, especially around long-term stability and that trust issue we talked about. So, boiling it down, what's the key takeaway here for different types of users? Let's start with individuals, like home labbers or people running non-critical stuff. For home users and those with, let's say, less demanding setups, this is likely a net positive development. Because it's simpler. Yeah, the reduced complexity in getting the hypervisor and the fact that the basic license doesn't expire, that removes some pretty significant frustrations from the old days. It makes ESXC a more attractive option, again, for those specific use cases, where the limits around vCenter and advanced features might not be such a big deal. But what about larger organizations, the ones who probably felt the heat more from the previous licensing changes? For many organizations, yeah, the window of opportunity might have already closed. They've moved on. The report suggests that the uncertainty around VMware's licensing really prompted many to explore, and in some cases, actually implement migrations to alternatives. Right. Proxmox, XEPNG, Nutanix, even going cloud native. Right. So reinstating a free hypervisor now, with all the existing limitations still in place, might just not be enough to persuade them to come back. Yeah. Especially given the investment and effort involved in those kinds of migrations. Yeah, rebuilding trust takes time and consistent action. That makes sense. So looking at the bigger picture, where do you see this potentially leading? Is this like the start of a fundamental shift in Broadcom's overall strategy? Or is it more likely just a temporary measure, a tactical thing? That's the fundamental uncertainty hanging over this whole situation, isn't it? It's truly difficult to say for sure. Yeah. It could be the start of a more comprehensive rethink of their virtualization approach, or it could simply be a tactical maneuver to deal with immediate blowback. So tread carefully. Pretty much. The report wisely advises listeners, you know, if you're curious, now might be a good time to test it out, kick the tires. Mm. But with a very important piece of advice, don't forget to save your license screenshot. Huh. Yeah, that really underscores the lingering apprehension, doesn't it? The worry about future changes. It certainly does. Okay, so to try and bring it all together for you, the learner, ESRI is once again available for free. On the surface, that seems like welcome news, especially for home users. However, this move has been met with uh, considerable skepticism by many within the community, and maybe with good reason, considering the recent past. Understandably so. The core limitations of the free version, no vCenter, no easy patching, probably still resource limits, they persist. And Broadcom's long-term strategy in this really crucial area remains quite unclear. Very much up in the air. So for you, the learner, does this news alter your perspective at all? Will you be uh, taking this free version for a spin? Or have you already explored and maybe even settled on alternatives? Hmm. This whole situation really just underscores the, you know, the fluid nature of technology and the importance of staying informed, but also maybe maintaining a healthy degree of critical evaluation when these kinds of unexpected changes happen. Absolutely. Critical thinking is key. And considering this unexpected return, it makes you wonder, what other well-established technologies might we see suddenly become freely available in the future? And what could be the underlying motivations driving shifts like that? It's definitely something to ponder, isn't it?